What's up, my little pretties? It's your mistress, the Queen of Lions here, and welcome back to another episode of Shadows and Pretties. Today, this is episode 91, and today I am going to be doing a Shadows and Pretties episode on this movie called The Land Before Time. Now, this Land Before Time movie was directed by Don Bluth, and I am going to sit here and say this, that this is actually one of my favorite Don Bluth movies. Besides Anastasia and Fumbelina being one of them, this one actually sits very well with my childhood, as it has been a good movie for ever since 1988, and it still is a very good movie. Most kids, probably like my age and everyone else's age, has pretty much grew up watching this movie as many times as a kid. They went on to making more sequels, although they're directed by, well, other people eventually, but... You know, that's just, um, here or there. Now today I am going to talk about the first Lamp Before Time movie, and if we have time, I will talk about the sequel, which is the second movie, The Great Valley Adventure. Now I will be making Shadows and Praise episodes regarding Lamp Before Time, but the only ones I am not going to be doing because I have not seen them yet is, um, Wisdom of Friends, which is the 13th movie, and Journey of the Brave. Those are the only two Land Before Time movies I'm not going to be doing at the moment because one, I don't, I don't, I have not seen them and two, I don't know them. So yeah, just to let you all know. So I guess with that being the case and with that being said, I think we should just get started on this movie. Now this has taken place, you know, during the, well, the time where the dinosaurs were around way long millions, maybe billions years ago before, well, the dinosaurs became extinct. Now, this is takes it during the age of the dinosaurs, which is um, also known as, well, the Mesoic era called the Age of Reptiles or Age of Confifters, which is the second to last era of the Earth's ecological history straight to million years ago as compared to the Jurassic, Jurassic, and the Cretaceous periods. So, a massive famine of forces of several herds of dinosaurs seek an oasis known as the Great Valley of Mons the Ever for, for people. Now, a mother Apalachosaurus, or long neck herd, gives birth to a single baby named Littlefoot. Now, years later, Littlefoot encounters Sarah, who is a Triceratops, or Freehorn, until her father intervenes and tells her that free horns can't play with long necks. Whereupon Littlefoot's mother describes her, the other kind of dinosaurs who only associate with their own species. That night Littlefoot follows uh, a frog or a hopper or, you know, a, well, prehistoric um, frog and encounters Sarah again. And they play until a uh, T-Rex, like a Tyrannosaurus Rex or Sharp Tooth, attacks them. Littlefoot's mother eventually comes to the rescue but receives a fatal injuries in the process as the earthquake swallows up the, well, the sharp tooth and divides Sarah and Littlefoot and the other dinosaurs from the herds. Several die in the process, including Littlefoot's mother, who gives her son some words of advice about finding the Great Valley. Littlefoot, let your heart guide you. It whispers. So listen closely. And with those words, she dies. Confused and in grief, Littlefoot meets a, well, an old clubtail or a scoilosaurus, I think that's what it's called, named Ruder, who consoles him. And he says he then is guided by his mother's voice, telling him to follow the sun to the Great Valley, which passed several landmarks such as the rock formation that resembles a long neck and the mountains that burn, or volcanoes. Littlefoot encounters a big mouth or... A Sauroposaurus so, or something named Ducky and a pterodactyl named Petrie who accompany on this journey. Sarah, who is, of course, attempting to find her own kind, finds the unconscious sharp tooth and makes a ravine inside a ravine and, and eventually wakes him up. She escapes and bumps into Littlefoot, Ducky, and Petrie. Then she tells him that sharp tooth is alive and pursuing them. So Littlefoot does not believe her, but as Sarah describes the encounter, she accidentally f flings Ducky into a direction of a lone hatching spike tail, or Stegosaurus, whom Ducky names it Spike, and 
and inducts to the group seeking the Great Valley, they discovered a cluster of trees, which is abruptly depleted from the herd of long necks. So, searching for the remaining growth, they discover this single half of bee bearing tree and obtain food by snack stacking on top of each other and pulling it down. While Sarah remains on foot, but when nightfall arrives, she and everyone else else grave aid to Littlefoot's foot side for warmth and companionship. So the next morning they get attacked by Sharptooth again, but they manage to escape through the tunnel which is too small for him to follow. Beyond this they discover landmarks mentioned by Littlefoot's mother, and Sarah stubbornly decides to go the other way and it insults Littlefoot's mother. Angry Littlefoot, this leads them into a fight, as this causes to follow Sarah, forcing Littlefoot to go alone. However, when Ducky, Spike, Spike and Spike become in, endangered by lava, Petrie gets stuck in a tar pit. So Littlefoot returns to rescue them, and Sarah is, gets ambushed by a pack of dome heads, or in this case, a Pachiosaurus, who are also living in the mountains that burn. With the rest of the group, group who gets posed as a tar monster, scaring the dome heads away and fight, frightening Sarah. She then realized who it really was. Sarah angrily leaves the group. Not long, however, it's clear that her pride has been wounded, and Sarah reluctant to admit that her stubbornness and selfishness had nearly put the others in danger. While crossing the pond, Petrie overhears the sharp tooth nearby, and the group advise a scheme to lure him onto the pond and drown him inside the side while using a nearby boulder. So during this time of struggle, the sharp tooth nostrils enables Petrie to fly for the first time. So the plan nearly fails when sharp tooth begins to attack hacking the boulder, but the group's attempts to push shit onto him. However, Sarah finally overcomes her sorrow, reunites with the group, and headbutts the boulder, causing sharp tooth to fall to the water down below. And the boulder ends up crushing him into process. The sharp tooth momentarily takes Petrie down and similarly to his death, but Petrie later emerges unharmed. Littlefoot now follows a cloud resembling his mother, which guides him to the Great Valley, was he joined by the others. Upon the arrival, they're all reunited with their families. Petrie he presses his family that his newfound flight, fight, flight, and Ducky introduces Spike to her family, who adopt him. Sarah reunites with her father, and Littlefoot finds his grandparents, and the group rejoins at the top of the hill, embracing each other in a hug. And that's basically the whole part of the plot of the first movie. Now, I really have to say when I watched this movie, I had it on VHS as a young kid. And I really do like how this one was doing pretty good. Now, Don Bluth also, you know, made this movie really great. Just like he did with American Tale and the live action film, I believe, called Who Framed Roger Rabbit. But, of course, I'm not really sure, but... Then there's like 13 2 direct to video, video sequels of The Land Before Time, including a television series, merchandise, and video games, which none of which had Don Bluth, Spielberg, or Lucas' involvement, but other people who have um, been working on this. So, the produ after during the production of American Tale, the talk began of a next feature with Bluff, Don Bluth, and he executive producer Steven Spellenberg. And they wanted to do a film similar to, well, Bambi, but this time only with dinosaurs. So George Lucas also brought in on the project and the free persuaded them in American Tale, Tale writers there is to write a screenplay for their film. So it was based on their early ideas, but then it felt that the story was too juvenile. So, of course, early into the story development, the film was about a group of young dinosaurs looking for wise older dinosaur. But later on, Don Bluth explained... We came up with another idea that none of these dinosaurs would get along with each other and they all hate each other, but they're taught that they are born not to associate with each other. And of course, you probably might... Some people... I did not know this until I got older. And that is... Present, and that is like, you know, dinosaurs were born not to associate with each other. That's racism, basically. So I'm sure you've probably have heard of that. And an early work title for The Lamp Before Time was The Lamp Before Time Began. Bluff and Spillenberg and Lucas originally wanted the film to have no dialogue, just like the Rite of Spring in sequence to such as Fantasia, the original Fantasia, but the idea was abandoned after a favor using voice actors to make it more appealing to children. 
So throughout the production, they went through severe cutting and editing of footage where they thought that some scenes of the movie would appear too dark and tense for young children. So, but while looking at the scenes of the film, while it's too scary, we'll have kids crying in the lobby and angry parents. You don't want that. So about 11 minutes of footage comparison to a total of 19 fully animated scenes were cut from the final film, containing a G rating instead of a PG. Now, most of the cut footage consists of the Tyrannosaurus attack sequence and sequences of five young dinosaurs in grave dangers and distress. Example, they can be seen in the storybook boards, you know, chase sequence, went in the briar patch and point of view shots of sharp tube snapping jaws were deleted. And there was like, they had to delete a lot of things because they think that it was going to be, well, too uh, scary for, well, for kids. So they did have to change, you know, a lot up when it came to that. So, of course, the same day as day, uh, the Land Before Time opened on November 18th, 1988, as the same day as the Disney film Oliver and Company came out. So, that's very surprising. It was a box office success, and of course, it receives reviews from critics, and it was a bo box office success. So, there are at least eight, 13 direct-to-video sequels, which differ from the original, by adding sing-along along in musical numbers. But of course, Blue, Don Bluth, Spielberg, and even Lucas have no affection with any of these film sequels. So they have been generally mixed with the reception and several fans of the original disregarding the sequels while the others embrace on the sequels as to the canon of the story. Now, of course, the television series was made in 2007, was released in North America, as it follows the sequels in terms of morality and music and numbers. So I guess I think I should probably, you know, just, ex you know, just kind of, you know, explain about the second movie. I'm not going to go through every single, well, um, sequel in this video, but there is going to be other, um, there's going to be some, you know, other Lamp of Time you know, episodes where I'll be talking about more of the movies. So, yeah. Of course, The Lamp of Our Time 2, The Great Valley Adventure, came out in 1994, and it's an installment sequel to the 1988 Lamp of Our Time movie. But this time, this one was directed by Roy Allen Smith. So, of course, it uh, the second direct video sequel was an animated feature film of The Return to, to Jafar, Return of Jafar, the sequel to the 1992 Aladdin movie, which was the first Lamp Before Time movie to be animated over the seas in Sunkul, South Korea. Now, with that being the case, let's dig in. So basically, it takes place right after the second movie where they, where Littlefoot and his friends lived a carefully life in the Great Valley under their family's watchful eyes when they again tries to get to Slivergrass to play sinking and surrounding it of course the sand adults rescued them and chased them for their recklessness saying they have to be more careful so eventually right the next night the children have a secret meeting decide to prove their bravery and maturity by while well, venturing to the mysterious beyond a location that is outside of the great valley doesn't happen it with well tyrannosaurus rex before they leave they notice two egg nappers or kind of like um I guess you could say Struffamorphus or something named Ozzy and Strut, stealing eggs from the nest of Ducky's mother. So the children pursued the intruders of the mysterious beyond. However, when the Great Wall surrounds the valley to protect them from Sharptooth and stolen eggs roll safely back to the nest, the group does not notice this confusion. So in the mysterious beyond, the group discover a larger egg mistaken for the original, and the gang transports the egg back into the valley, thinking it was the original egg back to Ducky's next nest. So when they hatch it, the gang doesn't realize that it was from another nest, and when the egg hatches, revealing a baby, well, Tyrannosaurus Rex, or in this case, Chomper, they added. So, of course, the task can prove to be difficult, as Chomper is a carnivore, so Littlefoot has no experience in raising a child. So Ozzy and Strut appear to be exact revenge on the group for fooling their earlier thief. But they are driven away by Chomper's enlarged shadow, which makes a mistake of an adult sharp tooth. So the gang meets Chomper and they accept him as part of the group until he hungrily bites Sarah's by accident. So the group knee jerk the reaction as Chomper ran off in tears, but they follow they follow him to what seems to be a volcano where Ozzy and Strut attempt to attack the children. 
but of course they are they are stopped when the mountain erupts sending them plumbing down the cannon so after the group escapes they encounter the adult sharp teeth who have managed to enter the great valley without opening the wall great wall and the whole great valley population drives the sharp teeth off and the children make it back to their families but chomper feels left out and he runs away again so the adults inquire on how the sharp teeth enter the valley prompting the children to explain the events of the resultant in the landslide so the adults set off as together to to find close opening for good the children were told to stay behind as littlefoot runs off to the forest to find chomper after the finding him, they're chased and cornered by two sharp teeth. When Chomper roars at them, they recognize him as their son, and they leave with him. So Littlefoot eventually gets kidnapped by Ozzy and Strut, who plan to throw him off the Great Wall. When Chomper hears Littlefoot screaming, it leads to his parent ter- parents to Littlefoot's location. So Chomper's parents rescue Chomper and attempt to inver- intervention, and advertently do the same thing for stealing the entrance between the Great Valley and the Mysterious Beyond. So following the experiences, Littlefoot tells his grandparents that being young is not so bad after all, but he decides that he still looks forward to growing up. Now that's basically the end of The Lamp of Our Time, The Great Valley Adventure. It's a really good sequel to the second movie, and I remember watching this as a kid, and I really have like a whole bunch of, well, Lamp Before Time uh, VHS tapes, and you know, I had a lot of them as a kid, and to be honest, it's a pretty good sequel to to the original movie. Now, of course, in July of 1993, Universal Cartoon Studios, or Universal Studios at the time, announced a video direct-to-video sequel of The Lamp Before Time was in development, but around the time, the film was not set to be released. So, of course, with that being the case, eventually it does get released to the public, and everyone really, really enjoyed you know, the movie, as it was, a, it was a great sequel, even though it came out a few days before Christmas in 2000, in 1998, 94. I apologize for that. Of course, most of this was also released on VHS and, di- and, and DVD, so eventually in the UK, US, and many other places. And of course, in 19, in 2011, the total film ranked as seven of among the 50 worst kids' movies. Which, to be honest, I actually found the sequel to be rather enjoyable. It's a very enjoyable sequel compared to the first movie, but the first movie would always be the best. So, I guess with that being the case, that being said, uh, what did you guys think of The Lamp Before Time and The Lamp Before Time 2 Great Valley Adventure? Did you enjoy them? Did you not? Did you like one of them? Did you not like any of them? Did you like both of them? And also, what would you have done personally to help make these movies a lot better? Feel free to leave me now what your thoughts are down in the comment section down below. I'm the Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you happen to be brand new here on this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. And don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload so then you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.